Nothing steady about a woman, Stoke. Their minds is as changeable as the moon. Yeah, and there's always a man in it. <laughs> man the moon, Juke. Get it? No. My pearl ain't like that. You and Pearl figure on holy matrimony? She don't like my whiskers. Then why don't you whack them all? Oh, Pearl wants me to, but I keep thinking about Samson. You mean Samson, the little tailor in Albuquerque? No, yeah, he's on Samson was a king. Lived in Egypt, or Africa, or someplace like that. But what about it? Well, he had a mane and whiskers just like mine. Strongest fella you ever seen. Pushed buildings over with his bare hands. Yes, sir. He had a gal, too, named Delilah. Didn't she like whiskers either? No, sir. Snuck in one night, clipped Samson's slicker in the front belly. After that, he was so darn weak, couldn't even break toothpicks. <laughs> 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 You're awfully sweet little girl, Miss Myrtle. And it won't be long before you meet your daddy in Albuquerque. Oh, Mr. Cole, you're so funny. Isn't he, Miss Wallace? Yes, honey, very amusing. <laughs> amusing? He's funny, isn't he, Mr. Martin? Very funny. Yes, sir, he's a regular circus. It certainly is. Thank you, ma'am, ladies. I aim to please. You know, Miss Myrtle, if I was going to see the man I love most, I'd try to get some sleep so as to look fresh and pretty when he meets me. I shouldn't wonder, ma'am. The same advice wouldn't work for you, too. You haven't closed your eyes since we left the railroad. I'm fine, thank you. Whoa! All right, come out of jumping and reach for nothing but sky. Everybody but the kid. Throw your guns overboard and come down out of there. We ain't got no gun, we ain't got no box. Get down! All right, everybody, line up. Don't let me try anything. Come on, get over there. Well, Lizzie, what have you got there? Nothing. I'll have a look at that No. Box. Boy, I got the tiger with the tail, the tiger with the tail. Fine way to make a living, robbing women. Shut up. Your next. That's not my money. It's collections. It belongs to you.
Bartle. Oh, Mr. Cole, you're an elegant. <laughs> I bet this old coach had a mighty scared little passenger. I was at first, but it ain't now. <laughs> All right, you get back inside and we'll pick up Miss Celia and the others. No, sir. I want to ride up there with you. All right. Up we go. <laughs> How's my kid sister? Ted. There, what's the matter? Did you hear what the driver said? We were held up. Did they get the money? Our ten thousand dollars, Ted. All of it. <laughs> Ted. Mr. Cole. What is, honey? I told Daddy how you knocked a bandit down and caught the runaway and saved my life. <laughs> I'm mighty obliged to you, Mister. If you ever need a friend in Albuquerque, you've got one. Thanks. I'll remember that. Funny, sir. Bus days hold up a month. Why'd they pick on my run? I want to tell nothing. Not even a gun rider. Why'd they kill that poor fella in there? Keep quiet, too. Now, who are the passengers in this coach? Well, I was driving. There was that lady and this fella here, the little gal, and that big fella over there, and the dead man. All right. The rest of you scatter. Go on, go on about your business. You look intelligent, mister. I'm the sheriff, and I'd like to know what happened out there. Five men held up the stage. A man was killed, and this lady here lost $10,000. What's she carrying that kind of money around for? I wouldn't think that concerned you or me. If I were wearing that badge, I'd get a posse and go after him. I didn't ask you how to run my office. And if you want to stay in this town, you'd better let me run it. Hank, get a couple of men to take care of this body. And round up my deputies and have them meet me here. Remember what I said about needing a friend. Goodbye, Mr. Cole. Goodbye, Myrtle. Sorry about all that money. Thank you. Mr. Cole, I want you to meet my brother, Ted Wallace. Mr. Wallace, we've all got a lot to be grateful to you for, Mr. Cole. Your sister has the name wrong. It's Cole Armand. I'm here to work for my uncle. John Armand? Yeah, that's right. What's the matter with those folks? You'd think I had smallpox. Sure. I'd rather really have smallpox in the name of Armin in this town. Go on, keep talking. All right, Mr. Armin. Here it is. There's a crowd of men gathering at the jail right now, yelling their heads off, demanding action. That coach brought a dead body in. That's murder. All right. I ordered Matt Wayne to get that Wallace girl's $10,000 if carrying out that order involved a killing. That was part of his job. Well, I could cover up the robbery, but killing, that's something else. Take the outraged citizens on a horseback tour, Linton. And Merkel. Merkel! Merkel! Get Wayne and his men out of town. You got it? Got it. I'm telling you the boss is busy and don't want to be disturbed. Now go on, sit down. I'm telling you again, I want to see him. Well, it's all a racket. Oh, this office boy says I can't see John Allman. You're looking at him. Uh, you and I, John Allman, by 30 years. Have you ever seen him? Yeah, a long time ago. How do you know I ain't him? By the size of your ears. That's going to get you thrown out on yours. Michael! Who are you? I came to see John Allman. I'm John Allman. What do you want? I'm here to take that job you offered me. What's your name? I was wondering when somebody would get around to that. I'm Cole Armin. Welcome, Cole. Welcome to Albuquerque. Get going, Merkel. This is Ed Linton, our sheriff. Yes, I met him down at the jail. I thought you were getting up a posse, Sheriff. I gave you some good advice down there. 
If you're smart, you'll take it. That's why he's here, Cole. Wants to borrow some of my men to go with him. You know, in Texas, if the law don't move fast enough, a rope and a tree is the payoff for robbing women and cold-blooded shooting. I'd be glad to go along, sir. Oh, you stay here, Cole. Uh, we got some talking to do. Uh, get what men you need from the yard, Linton. Better get going. Come on in, have you? And we've got to have a little talk. Just sit down and make yourself comfortable. Thanks. Quite a place you got here. Uh-huh. Well, how do you think you're going to like your new job? I can answer that when I find out what the job is. Well... I wouldn't send to Texas for a mule skinner, Cole. You're stepping into a manager's job. Manager? Yeah, help yourself. I got a big enterprise here. A transportation outfit that hauls most of the ore down from the mines. I've done the spade work, and the money's rolling in. Big money. But I'm getting tired. You aim to let me run all that? As soon as you learn the ropes. Now the Teamster's the toughest man alive. Respects nobody he can lick. And that covers a lot of territory. Takes plenty of brains and brawn to handle them. Sounds interesting. And we have to fight for contracts, too. That's where everything goes. No holes the bar. Why'd you pick me? Because you're an almond. Uh. And with another almond in the saddle, I can see my empire spreading beyond the borders of the territory of New Mexico. When do I start? You've already started. But you'll want to clean up a little, I guess. Uh -huh. Get a room at my hotel, then come back here. Thanks. Thanks, Uncle John. I'll try to measure up to all that. I want you to hit the Rio Grande bottom, south of town. Spread out and comb the timber, Harry. All right, sure. Here we go, men. when a man just has to have a drink. You're looking at a man seeking courage, comfort, and confidence. You can never find it in there. And I'm going to keep on looking. I've been humbled, humiliated, disgraced, and discombobulated, Mr. Herman. Cole's the name. Howdy, Cole. Mine's Juke. Howdy, Juke. What's eating it? Pearl. Fairest of the fair in all Albuquerque. And the best darn barber in the territory. Ah. Uh, lady barber? I called her that once. She run me down the street with a razor. <laughs> she says she's a tonsorial artist. And a high tone, huh? High tone, swell-headed. Has been ever since she shaved the governor last year. It'd really be tough on you if she ever shaved the president. Cole, that woman's tried to shave me every day for nine years. Says I ain't doing her business no good. If everybody was like me, she'd starve to death. Everybody, please. On double O. 
this is what's holding you up. I told you before that the boss said for you and your men to get out of town. All right. Jackson, cash these in. We're heading north to White Spring Canyon. Make a bet, Sid. All right, everybody pays. All get down together. Everybody pays. Everything goes on number 12. On number 12. Hey, Jackson, you want to go on number 12? Same ID I am? Yeah. Number 12. Oh, I won! I got the tiger by the tail! <laughs> Seems to me we've heard that before. Yeah. Fellow, we're going to have a talk. Speak your piece. I'm staying right where I am. That's a nasty cut. Kind of fresh, too. Hold it, mister. Get out there, all of you two. This is private and personal between my friend and that scorpion there. If living means anything to you, you've got a lot of talking to do. Let go. Come on, let me through there. Open it up. That scorpion's going to have a little talk with my partner, or he ain't going to twist no more tiger's tail. Well, it didn't take you long. I want Miss Wallace's $10,000. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. The money your thugs took off of that girl in the stagecoach. Oh, you know about that? Yes. Supposing they did. The Wallaces are our competitors, Cole. And you'd rob a woman, kill an innocent man to destroy them? The law of self-preservation applies to business, too. The competition has got to be strangled. So the end justifies the means. That's not important. Life is cheap out here. The money itself had no value to me as money. But don't you see, Cole? It would have set Wallace up as a dangerous threat to us. I'm building a big business here. That'll be yours someday. Wallace's 10,000 got in my way, so I removed it. Now I understand why our name is Poison in Albuquerque. Oh, you're too emotional, just like your father. That's why he died, poor. Never mind that. I want that girl's money. I don't stand for threats, Cole. If you've got any ideas of calling on the law, it'll be your word against mine. What about the word of your hired killer? He won't talk. If he don't want to shake hands with sudden death, he'll talk. There's a mob with a rope looking for you. You want to talk to them or to the law? Take him to the sheriff, Duke. Tell him I said to lock him up. I wish Pearl was here to see what a useful citizen I turned out to be. <laughs> Come on, get moving. Let's you and I have another little talk, eh, Cole? You want to save any of these, Ted? No, burn them all up. I don't want to save a scrap of anything to remind me of this place or anybody in it. How do you suppose Mr. Arman knew I was bringing the money? He's got connections all over this territory. And his nephew, being on the same stage, wasn't just a coincidence. Well, just because his name is Cole Arman doesn't convict him with me. Well, look, instead of using the money we have left to go home, couldn't we make a fresh start here? What with? The only start we can make, honey, is back home or go to work for John Arman. Arman, 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 that's all I've heard since I got here. Albuquerque could grow into a big city someday and you could grow with it. It's the fear of his power that's strangling you and everybody else in this town. I'm not going to stand by and watch you quit. Is this the Wallace Freighting Company? Ted, it was the Wallace Freighting Company. You've got nothing to say that we want to hear. Get out. Miss Celia, I don't want to fight anymore today. Will you ask your brother to sit down and listen? Sit down, Ted. I came here thinking you might need some help. What kind of help? I could learn to drive mules. Is this another one of your uncle's schemes? Well, I just came from him, but he didn't send me. I'm interested in this town and its possibilities. As a matter of fact, I'm looking for a job. You heard what my sister said. We're out of business. Maybe this will put you back in business. Our money. How did you... You'll find it all there. I don't know how to thank you. I can tell you how. By selling me an interest in your company. You mean 
You want to be partners with us? Reckon. Mister, you've made a deal. The Wallace Armin Freighting Company. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you again. Stop that noise. I ain't started making noise yet. When I do, everyone will hear me, including the United States Marshal. You can tell Armin and tell him this. I ain't aiming to go to no gallows alone. Walking from here to Chicago and back doesn't do my carpet any good. Besides, it doesn't solve anything. What am I going to do about that Jackson? How am I going to keep him quiet? So you got a prisoner who threatens to make trouble. I think we can handle that situation. What about them lamps running all night in the Wallace office? They're stockade busting with mules and new equipment. Tell you there's something going on over there. Oh, I know all that. What I want to know is what they got in the fire, what the contacts are, what the bids are. I want a report from the inside. How are you going to get it? <laughs> Party is going to attend to that. It's on the way here now. <laughs> so stop worrying. And get off my desk. <laughs> Money on a bobtail nag, somebody bet on the bay. Hey, wait a minute. What are you trying to do? Scald me tender enough to pick my pin feathers? Listen, you, you are having supper with nice folks. You don't want to smell like a mule, do you? Well, I ain't aiming to stay after vittles, anyhow. I got to meet Pearl when she closes her tonsorial parlor. Yeah. What are you looking at me like that for? Juke, there's a sheriff looking for you somewhere. Where? Where? What'd you say that for? Nobody'd hide behind that foliage you were wearing unless he was playing hooky from somebody's jail. Now, ain't that a nice thing to say? Here I agree to work with you fellas, take you into my home, and... Hey, how do I know how many sheriffs are chasing you around the country? I'm getting that look again. What does it mean this time? This time it means I'm gonna cut your hair. No, sir! You ain't gonna do no such a darn thing now. Stay away from me with them... Sheep shears, go on now. Hey, who is this awful looking character? Huh? Character? Yes. Why, doggone it, that's me without my whiskers. Cole, this is going to be a secret just twixt you and me, huh? you fellas are worrying about. You got wagons, mules, men, money enough for wages and feed till you get going. <laughs> I guess that ought to show John Armin you mean business, eh, Cole? I reckon you're right, Duke. But I'm just realizing how much I got to learn about this off freighting business. Ted, where is that half high mine you're talking about? It's a lot easier to show you on the map. Come on. I'll give you a better ID. Uh -huh. Now, this is the road to the mine. Yeah. It's the only way up. <whistles> that looks like a tough place to get to. Oh, getting up ain't the problem. It's getting down with ten mule wagons. Man, well, that's the only way you can make it pay. Those big wagons with trailers on that steep and narrow road sure looks dangerous. Oh, of course it's dangerous. But if Armin can do it, you can. Yeah. Armin? He's got Huggins, the owner, by the throat. Why, nobody else in town will touch the hall. So he gets his own prize. Can't we underbid him and make it pay? Enough to keep us going. That's about all. But if we can save money for Huggins, other owners will line up on our side. Well, it seems like to me we ought to pay Mr. Huggins a visit. Well, sure. Listen, you men, you come and eat this supper right now, or I'll feed it to the mules. Yeah, go on, get over there, go on, go on. You too, you too. You fellas ought to be ashamed of yourself. Here, Miss Seeley's been slaving over a hot stove all day, mixing fancy vittles for you galoot. Ah, uh, quiet, you can talk too much. That's an association with Damon and Pythias. Hey, wait a minute. If that road isn't wide enough for two wagons to pass, what do you do when you meet one coming down? You don't pass anybody. You see, there's a flag on top that's raised as a warning if somebody's coming down. We do the same thing at the bottom if we're going up. Eat your supper, boys. The 
Evening, Sheriff. Wait a minute, Harvey. Leave it here. I'll take it into him. Suits me. That Jackson don't look none too tame to me anyway. He needs a lot of watching. Yeah, uh, good night, Sheriff. Good night. Supper, Jackson. Now listen. When I leave, I'm going to forget the luck you in. That door's open. There's a horse waiting for you. You get aboard and out of Albuquerque. Fast. Well, you must have got my message, Dorman. When I come back in five minutes, I don't want to find anybody here. Understand? Sheriff, what happened? You can see, can't you? This fellow Jackson broke out of jail and I shot him. I reckon trouble's over for him. But it might just be starting for some folks. What do you mean by that? Nothing. Only sometimes dead men leave ghosts behind them. That's an awfully good supper, Miss Celia. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh-oh, I'm warning you now. You can't hold me responsible for any casualties. This is my first experience in an apron. Uh-uh. Huh? Oh. You're doing fine. <laughs> I think I spoke too soon. Well, at least this is one less dish to dry. I'm sorry. It was Ted's fault. He said you could do anything. Hmm. You know, that uh, brother of yours is all right. He's all the family I have left. When Ted came out west and got started in his business, I sold the home back east and joined him. I reckon he found the going pretty tough. He found your uncle running the whole town. Riding herd on the little fella, huh? Yes. I hope he won't be sorry you joined us against him. As a fellow in jail, I'm figuring on taking the jingle out of my Uncle Spurs. I'm sticking to my deal, Celia. I thought you'd be like that, Cole. Cole! Cole! Where is everybody here? <laughs> the sheriff just shot Jackson making a getaway on a horse. What? Yeah. I'm afraid your Uncle Spurs are still jingling. I agree with Ted here. We have the equipment and drivers and can guarantee the delivery of paying loads to the mill at a price attractive to you and profitable to us. Experience is more important than equipment, Mr. Arman. When a wagon train leaves our mine, we've got to know it'll get to the mill. I can answer for that. I drove the hall for Walton. I know every foot and every hazard. And now we've got Juke with us. Yes, sir. Ted'll be on the lead wagon. I'll be right behind him with Damon and Pythias. Why, I could make that run with a piano on the back of every mule pail of water in each hand, another on my head. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clark, what about a deal? Well, now, wait a minute. Mr. Huggins, our manager, feels you're new here. He wants me to show you what you're heading into. Come here. I saw it. I rode up here, you know. What's that mine up there? Angel's Roost. Angel's Roost, huh? But I wouldn't get too ambitious, Mr. Arman. It's the richest strike in New Mexico. But the road up there is just plain murder. Who's got that contract? Nobody. They're afraid to try it. Well, why'd you work the property if you couldn't get the ore down? Well, Huggins had a deal with John Arman. He agreed if we sunk a shaft, he'd get the ore to the mill. Well, what happened? Well, we'd like to broke our company digging in up there. And when we were ready to go, Arman welched. Tried to hold us up on the hauling price. I reckon he figured on breaking us and taking it over himself.
Howdy, lady. Welcome to Albuquerque. Thank you. But could you tell me where John Armin's office is? Straight down the street. Monicville. You can't miss it. I'll see you the good news. Tell him to put your coffee pot on. Right. Put him up. Get over here and open up this safe. There's no money in it. Open it up. Jump me when this young lady came in, start blazing away. Where's your buddy? Just went through that door. We can't have no bodies running around loose in Albuquerque. I'm afraid I'm not a very good shot. Good or bad, it was timely. You always carry a gun, lady? It came in handy tonight. Just happened to be passing by? Yes. I only arrived in Albuquerque today. I'm looking for work. I'm Letty Tyler. Work? What kind of work? Oh, bookkeeping, correspondence, payroll. I think I could make myself generally useful. We'll need some help, Cole. Now that we've got the Huggins contract, we expect to get others. We're certainly grateful to you, Miss Tyler, though I'm afraid we couldn't pay you much at first. Well, I'm sure I could make out on whatever you could afford. Well, what do you say, boy? It's all right with me. What do you say, Cole? I'm just a junior partner, whatever the seniors decide. And you can start working in the morning. We'll be busy with a half-high haul, so Celia, you can sort of acquainted with things until we get back. Fine. I was about to make some coffee. Won't you join us? Thank you. I'd love to. Lock up the Huggins contract, will you, Cole? It's on the safe. I had him open in the safe when the gal walked in. Your idea worked out just like you said, Mr. Armin. Well, I got the job. Did you find out anything? Yes, they're nice people. I wasn't asking about their social qualities. What are they up to? I've got a contract. First haul comes off in the morning, the half-high mine. I want to congratulate the both of you on a job well done. Sit down, Miss Tyler. I can see now that our association is going to be quite profitable to both of us. Looks all right, Juke. There's no flag shown on top. That keeps us right away. What are we waiting for? Let's keep going. on this road, Merkel? Hi, right, Wallace. Funny place to meet up, ain't it? 
You didn't raise no flag on top. That gives us a right of way. Flag or no flag, the right of way belongs to anybody that can take it. Put down that gun. And the other one, too. I guess you had things figured about right, Cole. Figured? <laughs> you didn't think your boss was the only armor in town that could figure, did you? Both of you get on and unhitch those horses. This job doesn't include janitor work, Letty. Oh, I'm just sort of clearing the decks for action. Ted won't know the place all cleaned up. Do you think they'll get that ore down safely today? Well, Ted and Duke are the best drivers in the territory. They'll bring it down. I'm sure they will. I haven't seen Cole Armour today. He go along? Oh, no, he doesn't drive. He had some other business. Probably lining up some new contracts, huh? Probably. He's awfully nice, isn't he? Seems to be. Handsome, too. They made it! that for? They call this a wishing well, don't they? Well, I'm buying a wish for a dollar. And if I ask your wish and you tell it, then it won't come true. That's part of the legend, too, isn't it? Reckon. Mind if I ask you something else? Not if you keep looking at that dollar. Think you're gonna like Albuquerque? Reckon. I'm glad. I'm glad for a lot of things that have happened to me lately. Before Albuquerque? Keep looking at that dollar. You know, Celia, sometimes a a single face of person will change the whole way of a man's living, and... And he starts wishing for things that never occurred to him before. If your wishes and wants are real enough, they'll come in search of you. I wish I could believe that. Sometimes a man has to ask for what he wants. Tell me about Texas. Well, there's an awful lot of it. Lonely, sometimes. Funny part is, I, I never knew how lonely. Keep watching that dollar. When did you find out it was lonely? In El Paso, when you stepped into that stagecoach. And I found out something else, too. That I needed someone to share this business of living. Why don't you ask me, Cole? You're pretty good with that whip. A real expert could wrap around a man's throat at 20 feet. Strangle him to death. That could be a dangerous weapon. That's right. I can certainly think of more pleasant things to talk about. Thank you. Like what? Tell me, Ted, how did Cole know that Armand's men were going to stop you yesterday on the half-high ride? Well, he didn't know. You see, Cole used to ride with the Texas Rangers. They had a rule whenever they expected trouble, they'd send a scout ahead before they exposed their whole troop. He borrowed that idea from them. Pretty smart thinking. Oh, he's a smart fellow. We're sure lucky we got him. We got big plans for spreading out. Uh, spreading out? Well, you're practically one of the firm. I guess there's no harm in telling you. But if I have my way, we're going after the Angel's Roost contract. Your way? Yeah. Cole's afraid. That is, he's uh, afraid for the animals, men, and equipment. But I'll be driving that lead wagon, and I know I can bring him through. I'll be pulling for you, Ted. Then how can I lose?
Buenos dias, amigo. Buenos dias. Duke, what in the world are you dressed like that for? Oh, it's an idea, Pearl. Said she wouldn't go to the shindig at the mission unless I got all rigged up like this. I'm supposed to be at Tubidor. Tubidor? Yeah, Tubidor. The half high mine! The half high mine! Somebody blew it up! Tell Pearl I couldn't wait! Oh, get out of there! Get out of there! Welcome to the family. That's the best news I've heard in years. Thanks, Dad. I hope you'll be awfully happy. Thanks, Liddy. I'm sure we will be. Oh! Oh! Ted! Half high's been blown up. Half high? What's next, Cole? Angel's roost. Fellow, what you propose is impossible. But, Mr. Huggins, your loss of half high mine might put us out of business, too. That's why we're forced to tackle Angel's Roost. Twenty ton of ore slipping and sliding in that shale on a narrow road with only a prayer between you and a drop of 5,000 feet? No, you'd never make it. It's a road, isn't it? Not one that'll hold a 20 ton load in that shale with 12 mules. Walton tried it and lost wagons, mules, and men. We still want to try it. Have you got that kind of equipment and drivers? Give us a week. We'll have them. You can count on it. Just a minute. It'll have to be 10 wagons. Nothing less will pay. Ten wagons? Yeah. If you come through, there'll be a contract waiting for you at the mill. But I still think you're crazy to try it. Mr. Huggins, your people have extensive holdings all over this territory. Now, if we make good on this haul, we'll expect you to give us a chance at the rest of your business. Just have that mill ready a week from today. It'll be ready. Here's a warning. Just between us, we're not satisfied that half-high explosion was an accident. Neither are we. Come on, Ted. Good luck, boys. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Hope we didn't bite off more than we can chew. Yeah, we got plenty of time. Is it bad, Ted? My leg. Let me through it. What's going on? Who shot him? The man who shot him is dead. And you can tell John Armand for me that anyone else he sends after us can expect the same treatment. What's John Armand got to do with it? You ought to know that better than any man in Albuquerque. You're working for him. That's pretty wild talk. That's not talk, it's a warning. The next move Armand makes against us, we'll wipe him out if it means killing every one of his thugs and burning his place to the ground. Why don't you help me get him home? I don't want any more protests from you, Miss Tyler. Any consequences that follow your job, I'll back you up. But in case you get any righteous ideas. You're a criminal accessory to anything that happens. Don't forget that. Any scruples I might have had went on the bargain counter when I took this job. But you can count me out of any more murder plans. I give the orders here. I make the conditions. You've got your instructions. Carry them out. I'm still working for you. So. My nephew threatens to burn me out of business. Hmm. Yes. Is he going to be all right, Doctor? You needn't expect him to be on his feet for a couple of months yet. That bullet split the femur right through. Split the what? The femur, the thigh bone. Right now, he's suffering from shock. Needs rest. Plenty of it. That means no talking. I'll look in again in the morning. I guess that finishes us for the Angel's Roost contract. Now, why does it? <laughs> to listen to him talk, you'd think he's the only driver in New Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Ted, you can run the business right from here. You can get all the drivers you need, and we'll still make that run on schedule. <laughs> make it ahead of schedule. Juke, you stay here and help Celia. Where are you going? I've got some private business to attend to.
come in. Well, what can I do for you? I just picked these up at John Armand's place. Was I supposed to find them, or are you getting careless? That's one you'll have to figure out for yourself. Just figuring. You must have needed a job bad to fire blank cartridges at a hired bandit in a fake holdup. I needed a job bad. I didn't say a job. I said that particular job. You have it all worked out, haven't you? It wasn't hard to work out, Letty. Finding your gloves tied the whole thing together. Very clever. Wait a minute. Was that bullet in Ted's leg part of your deal with Armin? I had nothing to do with that. You mean you didn't actually fire the shot? If Ted knew you were behind the shooting, I reckon it would hurt him more than the bullet did. What, what do you mean by that? He's in love with you, lady. Arrest you for us. Arrest me? Wait a minute, what is this? Who made that complaint? John Armand. You had it already, didn't you? The whole town heard you threatening to burn him out. Come on. Good morning, Fred. Sit down, Dave. Stand up, Cole Armin. Now, Cole, you've testified that you were not in the vicinity of the fire, yet you refused to tell us where you were. Now, you realize, of course, if you have an alibi supported by a reputable citizen, it'll have a distinct bearing on your case. I have nothing to add to my testimony, Your Honor. Tell him where you were, Cole. Go ahead, tell him. You keep quiet, Juke. One more remark out of you, and I'll hold you in contempt of court. But he's being stubborner than a jug-headed mule. <laughs> Sit down, Juke. Tell him, Daddy. Go ahead and tell him. Uh, wait a minute, Fred. Myrtle here told me something I think you ought to know. Well, if it concerns his case, why, bring her on up here, Dave. Come on, honey. Be a big girl. Order. Order. Go ahead, Myrtle. Tell him just what you told me. Now, go ahead and talk, honey. Well, Mr. Your Honor, when my daddy ran to the fire last night, I was scared to be alone, so I went to the window to look at the fire and saw Mr. Cole running out of the house across the street. Now, and, Myrtle, uh, do you know who lives across the street? Her. I mean, Miss Letty. <laughs> Are you sure that that was the man you saw? I'm pretty sure. It was dark, but he was tall like him. Yes, I'm pretty sure. Well, it's a little irregular. Now, honey, you have to be positive. Your Honor, the defendant is my nephew. And I think we all feel he should be given every chance to clear himself. Very possible I have been mistaken. If such is the case, now is the time to correct it. Why not call Miss Tyler to the stand? If she substantiates this testimony, I'd gladly withdraw my complaint. Miss Tyler, will you take the stand? I can say it from here, Judge. Cole Armand was in my house with me last night. <laughs> Case dismissed. John Armand, you've used my courtroom to air a private family squabble.
For what reason, I don't know, and I don't care. But I'm going to see that it doesn't happen again. Cole Harmon, from today's testimony of your wild threats, I'm compelled to curb your evident appetite for trouble. Now, to protect you gentlemen from each other, I hereby order a peace bond executed over each of you in the amount of $5,000. Sheriff, carry out that order. Court adjourned. Celia, I, I reckon I owe you an explanation. I'm not interested in details, Cole. You owe me nothing. All right, Armin. You're in my custody until the bell bond's furnished. It was right neighborly of you to come and see me, honey, but uh, you better run along home now. A jail's no place for a lady. It is, too, if that lady's best friend's locked up inside. But I gotta stay here until they let me out. Oh, no, you don't. She's watered and fed and can travel four days without sleep. Now get to work. I'll keep watch while you saw. But that would be against the law, and we've got to respect the law. All right, I'm going to stand here until I let you out. If I have to stand tall, I'm a little old lady in a shawl. I'll be sitting here, a knitting and a waiting. here, young lady. I want to have a little talk with you. Don't you know your pappy looking for you? You better skedaddle home. No, sir. Not until Mr. Cole gets out. Well, he's getting out. I got the papers from the judge. The sheriff's going in and turn him loose. You better go in and keep an eye on him, Mr. Duke. I don't trust that old sheriff. Oh, don't you worry none about him, honey. I'll take care of him. Run along now. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Cole. Come on, Claire. Reckon Mr. Cole won't be needing us now. Come on. Juke just failed job. I'm warning you, better keep a check right on that temper of yours. Never mind the palaver. Give him his gun and we'll get out of here. Where'd that bond money come from? Well, it was sort of a community affair. Huh? Ted, Celia, Dave, Pearl, we all had a hand in it. We? Yeah, borrowed some money on the mules. Not Damon and Pythias. Well, we had to get you out of jail, didn't we? <laughs> well, I sure want to thank all of you. Good way to prove that is to get out of town. Otherwise, your friends will lose $5,000. Of course, it isn't your money. Never mind. Come on. Well, I guess we won the first round, Cole. You know, Juke, it don't take a smart man to figure my uncle's getting a bear trap ready for me. All you gotta do is stay awake, son. A man's only got so many fights to win, so many dreams to dream, so much loving and hating to do, and usually old age catches up with him before he can correct any mistakes he's made. What are you getting at? My biggest mistake, old timer, was ever leaving Texas. Oh, you can't say that, Cole, now. Eating time for the patient. Is that all I get? Food and medicine are measured out in doses for invalids. Yes, but I wasn't shot in the stomach. If you'd taken one step farther down, you would have been. You were lucky. You know, bullets aren't the only thing that can tear you apart. Disappointment in people can smash you, too. You're in love with Letty, aren't you? I was. I guess we both picked the wrong person. We have realities to face, Ted. Good news, folks. Well, I finally got all the drivers. I had to pay them double when they heard it was Angel's Roost, but I got them. We stacked a big climb at sunrise. What about Cole? Did you get him out of jail? He's out, all right. Out of town, probably. Out of town? Yeah, he said it'd be better for all hands to be lit out. Made a lot of mistakes here, he said. Gone back to Texas, I reckon. Something's got to be done about this. Oh, Milo. Milo. So the 
big Texas hero is crawling out of town. I don't aim to fall into any of John Armand's traps. I reckon Celia Wallace would like to see you turn a tail. But don't you worry. I'll be calling on her after you're gone. <laughs> Get up and fight. Fight in Texas. I'm staying in Albuquerque. As I was saying, Miss Tyler, you were brought here for a special purpose, and you failed completely. I don't think there's anything more to say to you, except that here's your ticket on the next stage. The sheriff will see you to the depot. I can find the way. I want to make sure that you get there safely. I don't need any protection. You'll need a lot of it if you're in this town after that stage leaves. Come on, sister. I'll bet this isn't the first time you were escorted out of town. Take your hands off me. <laughs> he busted his peace bond. From the looks of you, that isn't all he busted. Hold the jokes, Lincoln. Go on, Myrtle. Well, you, you told me to pick a fight with him. I did. All right, Sheriff. It's your move. I'll see Judge Martin and get a warrant for him for a attempted murder. That'll hold him in jail without bail just as long as I want to keep him there. Until you get tired of feeding him. Then leave the jail door open and shoot him off his horse getting away. I've changed my mind, gentlemen. I'm not leaving Albuquerque. I'd advise you to change your mind back again. No, you're going to change yours. If you arrest Cole Armand and declare his peace bond forfeited, I'll let out a yell that'll be heard in Washington. And I've plenty to yell about, including my own part in it. You're fixing for a spell in jail, aren't you, lady? I'll have company. Hurdle! You ain't gonna let her get away with that, are you? Yeah, you're the boss. What are you gonna do? Life in jail, if we can't stop her. You got more than her to stop. That Wallace outfit's gonna try the Angel's Roost Run tomorrow, and they got the toughest hombres in New Mexico driving. They ain't gonna stop at nothing. So they're gonna try for the high one, huh? It's suicide. He might make it. He's an Armin. Yes, he might. Get word to Matt Wayne. Yes, but you don't have to. I'll have more witnesses than you can get in the Fred Martin's courtroom that you was nettled into that fight. Now, wait a minute, Dave. It isn't that fight. I'd still be under bond, and next time, I'd kill Michael and maybe Almond. Hey, mister. We're shoving off for El Paso. You coming with us? Goodbye, old-timer. Goodbye, 
bad, Mr. Cole. I feel awful. So long, Dave. Wait up there. Wait. Hold that coast, driver. Hold. Hold, I mean you ain't going no place. What's all this? Ask Letty. Don't ask me how or why. But there'll be no further actions by the sheriff on that peace bond. What's what? that? You hear that? Look, fella, I'm pulling out. You leaving? No, I ain't. Keep the gittin'. Come on, son. Come on. <laughs> Good luck, Cole. I'm betting on you. I hope you win, Dave. <laughs> I got it. I'm going to send Myrtle to college with those winnings. Merkel's laying 10 to 1 that Wallace's outfit don't make the run. I'll bet $10 they do make. It's a bet. Here you yeah. I'll take $100. Yeah. All right. I'll bet you 2 to 1 they don't even get up there. I'll take that. Sure. Yeah. All right, Alex. Then they don't. I'd give a thousand dollars to be on that lead wagon. Duke will bring him through. Why didn't you go down at the gate and wish him luck? Somehow it didn't mean as much as I thought it would. Well, after all, you know Cole wouldn't have been much help. He can't drive. It was his being here that made the difference. I'd feel better if he was with him. I know, sis. Strange, isn't it, how one person can become so important in your life that without them, nothing seems to matter. It is strange. We ought to be ashamed, thinking of ourselves when men and animals are risking their lives for us. It's going to take a lot of courage and luck to bring those wagons down. All we can do is wait and hope for the best. Maybe a little prayer from this end will help them, and us. On time, it's due here in two hours and 15 minutes. Well, that means more trouble. Trouble? It's Matt Wayne and his men. It's no secret here in town that they're John Armand's gunmen. What do you want here? I want to see Ted. Matt Wayne and his men just rode up to Armand's place. Right now, they're probably getting instructions to smash your outfit and call Armand, too. Cole Armand's on his way to Texas. He started for Texas, but Duke and I stopped him. He's up there now helping to bring your wagon down from the Angel's Roost. Do you expect us to believe that? You will when you hear the rest. You were wrong about Cole, Sr. He guessed that I was working for his uncle, and he was right. John Armand brought you to Albuquerque to get information about our plans? Yes. 
Cole suspected me, and that's why he came to my house the night of the fire. Oh, you don't know what it means to hear that, Letty. Where are you going, sis? It's time somebody in his family started thinking about Cole. You must have had a pretty good reason for changing over to our side, Letty. I did. I'll tell you when I have more time. Now, boy, we're in for a tough job. You all know what's ahead of you. Remember what I told you? The shale starts slipping or you get in any trouble, cut the animals loose and jump. Let the wagons go over. You understand? Sure, Duke. We understand. All right. Get up on your wagon. I'll give the order to start. All right, boys. Come on. Let's get going. I want to wish both of you boys a lot of luck. We'll need it. Here we go, Cole. Albuquerque or bust. Good luck, Duke. I hope you make it. Make it? Shucks, I can make that ride stand on my head. <laughs> Duke, one of your riders have run out. Huh? What? Which one? Jim Ruff. Turn out for town on a horse. Must have had one here waiting for him. No, gone it. I was scared of that feller, but he's all there was left. Armin hired every driver in town. Armin probably hired him, too. Too bad. I guess that hangs you up. The agreement with Huggins was ten wagons or no deal. Tell Huggins it'll be ten wagons. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Cole. Wait a minute. Who's going to drive rough wagon? I'm going to try it. Listen, this ain't no Wells Fargo four-up stagecoach on a flat Texas prairie. This, this is, is a 12-mule hitch on a bad mountain road. I know, I know. I'm scared to let you try it. Listen, to tell you the truth, I'm twice as scared as you are. But standing here arguing isn't getting that ore down to the mill. Get on your wagon, Duke. Wayne, if they ever get down from that run, it means... Is that... there any chance they won't make it? There's a good chance they won't make it. What do you want with him and his men? To play safe on the off chance that they might make it. I want this Wallace outfit destroyed, wiped out permanently, to show Albuquerque that I'm still running it. You know what to do. Now get out, both of you.
on that coal I told you you couldn't drive. What's the matter? Uh, the brake snapped on me. You mean to say you come down through all that shale with no brake? Yeah. Why, the man ain't living that can do it. I'm not sure I am living. <laughs> I thought we was both goners. Us and the mules when you come barreling down on us there. Take a look at that. Why, that one broke for sawed. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, we got some business now, because... No, you don't. You get up on that lead wagon. I'm going to keep my eye on you. Now you make me feel a lot better. Thanks, Pappy. Yeah. Pappy? Hmm. What's going on, Harvey? Everybody's leaving town. Well, can you blame him? Not Wayne and his men are back. Better get your kids and head for home. Maybe you're right. Remember, no shooting till the sheriff fires. Sidney, you look scared. I am cold terribly. Is it Ted? Anything happened to him? No. What's the matter now? Why did we stop? The town's alive with Mad Wayne and his men. They're staked out waiting for you. It's wholesale murder, Cole, if you take a step farther. We're obliged to you for the warning, Celia. But I reckon we can handle any trouble that comes along, ain't you? The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. That's from the good book. Now, if you folks will excuse me, I'll have the men gird their loins for battle. I didn't figure you aimed to put yourself out for me anymore. Thanks to Letty, I'm seeing things clearly again. Listen, Cole, bringing the ore in isn't important now. Your life is to me. Thanks, Sidney. You run along home now by the side roads. And if by chance you should see Preacher Murray, tell him he's going to have a couple of customers. I will. Get out. Take care of yourself, Cole. Get out. You've got a good reason to now. like the Armin Empire is going to war. All right, Miss Tyler. Now you'll see what happens to people who oppose me. The first sound of firing out there, you'll get a bullet in your back. A gun with blank cartridges doesn't frighten me. Blank cartridges? Are you going to get your men off that street? I'm not changing my orders.
Joe's over. Oh, yes, Nick. Hey, Walton got here with the cavalry just in time, didn't he? Supreme sacrifice. I'll be dead blasted if I want the whole town watching. Pull down that curtain. 